Hello again, and welcome to my 400th episode. When I started making videos for this channel, I never thought I'd get this far. I read a lot of the episodes, talked about a lot of things, gone through a lot of weird channel updates, talked to a lot of weird people. Some of these people are confused. The people who want to criticize great movies for petty reasons and wouldn't recognize a good one fell in laps. Enough of this, I'm going to talk about a movie not only just to understand what I feel when I first saw it, but it changed me as a person. The rest, Hayao Miyazaki spirited away. And to this day, it's one of my favorite movies and amazing one of that, so let's open it up. We open on a girl named Jahira looking over a bouquet of flowers as she moves to a new home. Her family is moving to the Japanese countryside, her father points out a new school. Jahira is not happy about the whole situation. Her mother tells her what an adventure will be to move to a new place. As the movie begins, Jahira is a bit of a pessimist, and his patience is going to be important later. The father turns away and gets everyone lost. Imagery here is impressive. Anyway, they stop at the gate and father believes it's fake. Jihiro notices the wind pulling the men. The dad wants to go in, but Jihiro does not. Mom also wants to go, but Jihiro still refuses. After pondering by the statue up front, she does go in. The woman wants to the place is, and Jihiro hears a train. They call all come over a grazing field see a bunch of buildings. The dad believes the place is abandoned abandoned theme park sitting in the economy went bad. Oh yes, the lost egg and all those abandoned theme parks. Just do a Google search for those terms you'll get a lot of interesting information. Jahira wants to go back and the wind starts blowing harder. They cross the driveway of a van where the dad smells food. The mom notices a bunch of restaurants where the dad finds around a whole bunch of food. The parents start eating. Jahira doesn't want any parents pulling start making pigs themselves. Jahira tries to warn them but they just keep gorging. Jahira starts to take a walk and sees a massive bathhouse. She looks up on the bridge and sees a train hanging go by when a boy approaches her. The boy tells her she shouldn't be there. The lights come and the boy tells her she had to go or, she, or he distracts the others. Chihiro finds her parents, but they turn into the pigs. Chihiro tries to find her parents and get out of there. She goes out of Eric's car and is blocking her way back. Chihiro thinks she's dreaming as the boat comes up and she has to become a see through. But dogs, many spirits get off. Chihiro goes up the hill as the boy finds her. He says he can help Chihiro. This is the easy for this world or her she'll disappear. Chihiro abuses her hand and goes right through the boy's head. Chihiro eats the food and becomes tangible again. The boy assures Chihiro she will see her parents again. Chihiro can't get up. Boy motions makes it so Chihiro can walk again. Boy takes her to the store of her room in a pig pen. They each person boy chases Chihiro to hold her breath as they cross, or they'll know she's human. A spits in the bathhouse greet either boy as they cross. His name is Haku. They almost cross, as when a frog leaps in the air greets Haku, which surprises Chihiro. Haku then traps the frog in a bubble while they slip away. Haku to Chihiro and tells Chihiro that she can't say that and she has to go if she wants to help her parents. Haku then mind mounts Chihiro to give her instructions. Things quite dark, she must go to boiler room and meet the boiler man, Kamaji. She has to ask for a job in the, in the cave, asking if they refuse. She doesn't get a job, your will turn her into an animal. Uh, no, but your brother's a witch who's in charge of the bathhouse. Kamaji will try to her, but, she, but Haku tells her to keep asking for work. Haku leaves, saying they'll meet again. She will ask how he knows her name, and Haku says she has he's known her a long time. Haku goes inside, and Chihiro steps out the back gate. <laughs> Chihiro then carefully makes her way down the stairs. She tries to watch her step, but a board breaks and she comes careening down into a wall. Chihiro reaches the boy then and sees Kamaji. He's a peculiar man on siege arms. Anyways, she also sees a bunch of soot spikes carrying a piece of coal into the fire. The appears that Pieta appeared in my neighbor Todoro. We'll get to that one. Chihiro pushes Kamaji and asks for a job. Kamaji claims he has the soot spikes for that. Her spice is up high enough as Chihiro tries to move out of the way. She so sees one spike drop a piece of coal in himself. She tries to lift it and what to do with it. Kamaji just defends what she started. She then tosses the coal in the boiler. At this, all the suspects are dropping the coal themselves and gathering to Hiro's feet. Kamaji tells the spikes to get back to work. The woman enters and says it's dinner time. She says Hiro knows that she's human. Kamaji says he, that she's a granddaughter and tells the woman to take her to Yubara for work. The woman, named Lynn, refuses but changes her mind when Kamaji gives her roasted newt. Kamaji tells Hiro to see Yubara if she wants a job. Lynn tells Hiro to follow her. Hiro thanks Kamaji as she enters the bathhouse. Len says they need to go to top floor. I really enjoy the design of the bathhouse, not just the architecture, but all the moving parts and machinery. Len tells the hero how they reach a halfway point and she greets the marriage spirit. I was really enjoying the designs of all the spirits as they go through the bathhouse. Len tries to hide the heroes when the attendants smell something. Len presents her as a new taunts the attendant with it. But the hero pulls the lever to go up as she stays hidden. She reaches the top in Yubaba's office. She tries to open the door, but the knock reaches as the door is open. Now I'm going to pull Shahira in, the door shutting one by one behind her. The barber is filling out forms, three heads jump and roll towards the hero. 
She got asked for a job and he bought her quite literally zips her lip. Bob was not happy with Chihiro coming there and asked who helped her come there. Chihiro asked to continue to ask her job which means she brought angry and she promptly tells off Chihiro. And as the baby starts crying and Ibaba reluctantly gives and agrees to give Chihiro a job. <laughs> Ibaba gives Chihiro a contract to sign in order to work at the bathhouse. Ibaba takes her knee right off the contract and dubs her Sen. Haku wonders and Ibaba tells him to set her up with a job. Sen tries to speak with Haku but, she, but he's acting differently than before. He tells her to address him as Master Haku. Spirits are not pleased with Ibaba's decision much less the fact they had to work with a human. She promises to work hard and Haku says if he doesn't, well, they can decide that. Of course, Sanji Lin, who was not placed in service, once said with the others, not as impressed with her. I really like Lin. I like the no sense and often attitude she displays. Sen breaks down the situation and Sen tries to comfort her. Haku goes to Ibaba and she wraps her cloak on herself and flies off like a bird. Morning has come and Haku comes to wake Sen. Who still knows who she really is and agrees to take her to her parents. So that's why she's playing Sen her shoes as she goes to meet Haku. As she exits the building, she sees a strange spirit known as No Face. Aku tells Sen to hurry because if they find her, they'll turn her into a pig. She finds her parents, hence, hence that she'll save them. And Aku tells her, and says that she has to remember where they are. Aku gives Sen a clothes and the goodbye card with the real name, and she'll need them to get home. Aku says that the Ubaba controls her pristinely, and she wants to call herself Sen while she stays at the bathhouse. Aku says she must remember her name when she won't get home. She forgot her name and is trapped there. Ko presents Sen with some food which destroys her strength. She continues to eat, she lets out her pain. As she goes back to the bathhouse, as she thanks Aku for being such a good friend, she's dragging in the sky. Sen goes back to the bathhouse to get some rest before her first day of work begins. As a rainy day, the bathhouse opens her business. Sen tries her best, but is not used to working so hard. She and Lin are assigned the big tub. Sen goes has to get the water out of the basin when she sees no face. Sen then reaches the big tub, which has not been cleaned in months. Then sends a sending an oval soaked token from the foreman. Ubaba sees a guest coming, even when all the shops close their doors. The foreman won't give Sen the token and orders Sen to scrub it herself. No face appears. The foreman enters the telephone as No Face gives Sen the token. When Sen and Lin clean the tub, Ubaba tells the foreman over the intruder. No Face gives Sen a bunch of tokens as the tub overflows. Ubaba says a stink spirit is coming, but Ubaba is suspicious. She tells Sen and takes the spirit to Big Tub. As everyone we cause and discuss, the spirit takes him to his clothes in the bath. Just a chance sending to prove herself. The stink spirit covers the entire area in muck. Now, Sen goes to refill the tub to help clean the spirit. She breaks the stench and fills the tub of water. The spirit takes her in his hand and then feels something inside the spirit's side. He always orders the staff to help him, he not a stink spirit. She steps herself and tells the staff to heave. They pull out by his corner with a bunch of other garbage and muck comes spilling out. Now, the spirit takes Sen and convinces her to dump it. Munch all the trash, there's gold. The tub starts to rumble. As the spirit makes his way out the door, it was a river spirit. Everyone comes down to celebrate Sen's success. That evening, Lin and Sen share dinner as they talk about the events of that day. Sen tries to dump being in a silver vault that she gobbles up the rest of her dinner. Frog is wandering the halls when No Face gives him gold. He produces more and more, then eats a frog. No Face tells the boss he wants food in the bath. Next morning, Lin Sen goes to see her parents, but it was only a dream. She wakes to find Lin and everyone else gone. Sen looks over the horizon and notices the boiler is going. She goes downstairs to find a no face for dividing everything and saying, Hey, go by the handful. Sen decides to go find Haku. Sen wants to find her and see Haku attacked by a bunch of strange birds. Sen Haku tells Haku to fight them off, but he's injured. She gets Haku inside to go because the birds are just made of paper. Sen Haku goes to find Haku bleeding. She has to console him, but he flies to the top window and decides to go follow him. Meanwhile, everyone is celebrating No-Face's riches. Sen tries to go upstairs, but the elevator offers a scale of blood on her. She will take the go for No-Face, when everyone else is in the get it, she slips away. No-Face then starts eating the staff of the bathhouse. Sen starts climbing the scaffolding of the bathhouse to reach the top floor. She's on the ladder, the ladder as Yubaba uh, returns to the bathhouse. Sen tries to open the window, she falls and finds herself in the baby's room. She hides while Yubaba is before the staff being eaten, and notices Haku is dying. Sen tries to slip away, but is grabbed by the baby. It's a girl, but baby calls her germ. Sen says there's someone she knows needs help, but we don't want to go. Sen holds up a dirty hand as she slips out. The head pushes Haku down the garbage chute as the baby enters Yuawa's office. Someone in the room looks at Bella, but it's not. She turns the baby into a mouse, the bird into a sparrow, and the heads into a baby. The woman is Yubaba's twin sister, Zaniba. Zaniba demands her gold seal from Haku. 
He goes getting worse, and he and Sam and fall down the chute. So Cole makes his way through the interbillions and has a flashback to when she was younger. They crash into the boiler room. Kamachi determines Haku is bleeding internally. Sen games in the medicine. Haku rides around and he swallows it. The seal comes down and the slug comes off it. Sen squashes it. Haku reverts back to human form. He's still in bad shape. Kamachi and Sen and Sen tend to him. Kamachi explains Haku was drifting to show up one day. He became Yubaba's apprentice and was never the same. Sen decides to help Haku by going to return the seal to Geneva. She asks for space for her clothes and shoes. <coughs> Kamaji tells Sen to go to Swamp Bomber to see Zaniba and present to a train to get to make the journey. Sen goes to confront No Face about the trouble she's caused. He's not, and she let him in. And Yubaba asks about the monster on shoulder and then sends her in. Sen calmly asks No Face to leave. No Face No Face tries to bite her goal and Sen gives her the medicine. This part is pretty gross. Sen starts throwing up everything and everyone he's eaten. Yubaba hurls a fire about No Face because he's puking on everything and everyone in sight. Staff even comments on no pieces of esophagus. Lin meets Sen on the boat to take her to the train station. Sen tells no face to come with them, as the last thing he throws up is the fall log he ate first. Sen then begins walking the tracks towards the station. She goes there just as the train does. She spins a conductor with a ticket and begins to drive to Neba's house. Night falls as the train makes its way down the line. Back at the bathhouse, Haku wakes and demands no one's sinners. Haku is recovering through the power of love. Baby's developing lots of snacks. Yubaba's not happy for Sen leaving. Quinn just knows that suddenly Paris is about to be replaced. Yubaba's because the baby's gone, the gold's just dirt. Baba demands to know where baby is, and Haku tells her that he's with Zaniba. <clears throat> Haku will get her baby in return for revoking Sen's contract, as well as returning her and her parents to the real world. Baba agrees on the condition she undergo one last test. Zen, Sen, arrives in Swamp Bottom. She follows her past Zaniba's house. Anton comes to the green room as he continues Zaniba's house. Send the others into and Zimba greets him and she decides to make tea. Send so turns to heal and apologizes for Haku. Zimba knows his charm is gone. Zim so explains he's done and slug. Zimba expects his barber put the slug in Haku so she can control him. Zimba replies his lo that love is what broke the spell. So tea is Zimba tells her how that she and her sister are opposites. She goes on to say that Sen and will have to help her parents on her own with what she can remember. Sen says she met Haku a while ago and Zimba says that's a good start. So when they make her something, a type of head that will protect her. Yeah. Haku arrives at the door in his dragon form, alive and well. Zimba forgives Haku for the seal and no face decides to stay. So he removes her name and name and name Jihiro. Jihiro then sets off. Jihiro then remembers when she was very young. She had lost her shoe in the river. When she tried to get it back, she fell in. She thought she drowned, but the water saved her. She realizes Haku is really speed of Haku River. At this, Kohaku takes his true form and his memories return. His memories will be gone, but his memories are back. One he arrives at, at the bathhouse of Chihiro and Kohaku return. The baby returns. Kohaku then reminds Yubaba of her promise, and Yubaba reminds him of the test. Chihiro, now more confident, then faces you as Yubaba and accepts her test. With the contract ahead, Yubaba says to tell her at which pace her parents and they can go. She says another picture of them. She quit and she can go. Chihiro then can go, and her parents lend her back when they started. Chihiro tells her to go, saying they will meet again. Sure enough, her parents arrive at the gate waiting for her. Chihiro joins her in the back of the beginning. And this, her family goes to a new home, and Chihiro decides to face a future laying before her. So that's Spirit Away. The dullest years it remains, it's an amazing movie, and one I will hold within my heart. Seeing the beautiful animation and the movie serve how Chihiro goes to such magical and grows in her fighting one that makes the movie no one should miss. When this fantasy adventure stands on the I also wonder if the worst of all is the ideal family film. I first saw it when I was 11. I'm 21 now, and God willing, I will still be watching as I continue my education and find work one day to get married to have children of my own. My final reign is forces out of four. Thank you for supporting me all this time. I'll continue to make videos to share with you as long as I can. Bang.